So I want to talk to you about Apple Pay for Business, and this is a review of um, Apple Pay for Business. The thing is that here is a guide I want you to really think about. Well, Apple Pay is actually a mobile payment and uh, digital wallet platform that lets users make uh, purchases in stores, through apps, and on websites using uh, Apple devices such as iPhones, Apple Watches, iPads, and, and Macs, okay? And so when you think about Apple Pay, I want you to think about uh, half a billion users globally, okay? But in the States, Apple Pay actually dominates the U.S. digital wallet market with a share of over 90%. That's really huge, okay? And Apple Pay's capabilities uh, have grown to include features such as uh, you have an Apple Cash for person-to-person -person payments and the an Apple Card, a, a credit card. And so this integration with a range of uh, Apple services and devices actually provides a comprehensive financial experience for users. So that's kind of cool. If you are actually uh, thinking about having uh, Apple Pay for business, this is an opportunity for you because you are able to uh, connect with a lot of customers. And Apple Pay is supported in nearly uh, 100 countries and regions. And so this global reach is made uh, possible through uh, partnerships with a wide range of banks and financial institutions that really enable uh, easy integration with international bank accounts and credit cards. So that's really fantastic. And one thing that I want to say here is that when you think about Apple Pay, I want you to think about a, a payment uh, sort of conduit that has substantially affected the global payment market illustrating the global shift towards uh, digital uh, and uh, mobile payment methods worldwide, okay? So that's really good. And as a business, you have, a, it's really bonanza for you if you set things up properly. So if you have a business that considers integrating Apple Pay as a payment method, you should really understand the platform's technical requirements, transaction processes, and user experience, including how Apple Pay integrates with uh, point-of-sale systems and online payment, uh, payment gateways. And that's what I, I want to talk about in today's conversation because uh, whether you have a brick and mortar, uh, brick and mortar store or an online uh, online store, the, you, if you are able to integrate the Apple Pay properly, you will be able. To, you can really potentially a two x or three x your revenue because all of a sudden you can in, you can open up uh, your uh, your payment uh, possibilities to a whole new world of, of of users and customers. So that's really good from a sustainability point of view. So when you think about Apple Pay for business, let me give you the details you need to really pay attention to uh, this year. I want to first talk to you about how does uh, Apple Pay work so you have a clear idea how the whole thing works and how the whole things that work in the background, okay? So Apple Pay uses a combination of hardware, software, and security protocols to facilitate secure and convenient transactions in a wide range of business scenarios. So and the, the cool thing is that is that uh, Apple Pay is constantly... Uh, Paying attention to authentication, to a data, to a data authentication, to user authentication, to uh, data pre data privacy and data let's say uh, preservation, privacy preservation, and uh, so devices that run Apple Pay, including iPhones, Apple Watches, iPads, and Macs, must have the necessary hardware for accepting contactless payments, such as uh, a near field communication chip, so NFC chip. That's really important. That's quite essential when you think about. Uh, an Apple Pay transaction, you got to have the NS NFC chip. So throughout the, the uh, transaction, Apple doesn't store the user's credit or debit card information, nor does it keep uh, transaction information that can be uh, tied to the user. That's really good. And all Apple Pay transactions are protected with uh, tokenization. So each credit or debit card that a user adds to the app gets a unique device account number, which Apple Pay uh, uses during, during uh, transactions in place of the real card number. So that's really fantastic. It really helps a lot in terms of uh, adding an extra layer of uh, credibility, accountability, but most importantly, of data privacy to the to the uh, transaction. So here is uh, how, as a user, you can set up Apple Pay and complete transactions, whether as a business uh, owner or whether you are a uh, regular user. So setting up, uh, first user, as a user, you add a credit or a debit card to your Apple Wallet app and users can scan their card with their device's camera and enter their details manually or enter the, the details manually. And Apple Pay securely sends the card information to the card issuer for verification. And once a user adds a card successfully, Apple Pay generates the device account number that encrypts its stores in the device's secure element, a specialized chip. So that's kind of cool. And you have making in-store payments. So when, when paying at a store, Users hold their device near the uh, contactless reader, which will automatically uh, open the Apple Pay app. 
and the NFC chip in the device communicates with the terminal and transmits the device account number and a transaction specific dynamic security code. So that's really, really uh, encrypted. And the user authenticates the payments through a touch ID, face ID, or the device passcode. And in terms of uh, making online payments, this is kind of cool also because for online or in-app purchases, as a user, you uh, select Apple Pay as the payment method, then authenticate the purchase through a touch ID, face ID, or a passcode. And the uh, transaction is completed using a device account number, which really maintains the security of the card details. And what about making person-to-person -person payments? So with Apple Cash, users can send and receive money through uh, messages or by using Siri. Funds a user receives are stored in the Apple Cash card in the wallet app and can be used for purchases or transferred to a bank account. So that's really cool. I want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, geography here. So when I speak about Apple Pay for business, you got to really have a clear idea about the locations there are. They are really uh, pretty uh, popular when it comes to uh, Apple Pay. So where is Apple Pay used? Well, Apple Pay has an impressive global reach of with uh, over uh, half a billion active users. So if you are a business owner, this is really good, okay? Because remember, the global contactless payments market was valued at uh, nearly $50 billion last year and is projected to uh, grow by a 19 to 25% annually through 2030, okay? And uh, basically, you also have a, a great market that's really opening up new frontiers, if you will. So you have digital payments in uh, Southeast Asia and Africa. So in North America, Apple Pay holds over a 90% market share in the United States, where it accounted for 48% of all digital wallet payments at physical stores as of last year. It has benefited from uh, favorable regulations such as uh, EMV chip standards and a well-established contactless infrastructure. And Apple Pay is also the leading mobile payment method in Canada, where it has similar regulatory support. You also have Europe. So Apple Pay is Europe's uh, second most used mobile payment method after uh, Google Pay, though its uh, market share varies by country. Okay. Now, European Union uh, directives such as uh, Payment Services Directive, the, the PSD2 regulation, which promotes open banking and content as payments, have supported Apple Pay's growth. So that's kind of cool. And other requirements such as uh, strong customer authentication have added steps to the transaction process. You also have uh, Asia Pacific. So Apple Pay is among the most used mobile payments methods in Australia, a market that has shown uh, strong interest in uh, digital payments. In China, however, Apple Pay faces challenges because of the dominance of competitors such as WeChat Pay and uh, Alipay, as well as stricter regulations such as the Personal Information Protection Law. And in Latin America, about 20% of people in Brazil and Mexico used the uh, Apple Pay for online uh, and in-store payments last year. What about MENA? What about Middle East uh, and uh, Africa? Well, Apple Pay's presence in the Middle East and Africa is in, it's in early stages. The platform has about 15 to 25 percent, uh, depending on the country uh, in terms of market share, but it's still growing anyway. So that's really good. So if you are thinking about opening an Apple Pay for a business account, you got to really have a, a clear idea about your potential users, a clear idea about the, the individual user types, but also about the business user types. OK, because those are basically uh, those who are going to buy from you. And uh, what I want to say here is that uh, customers and businesses worldwide use Apple Pay for a growing range of transactions and either B2C or B2B or C2C. So Apple Pay users find it faster and more convenient than traditional payment methods. And Apple Pay's security features, including tokenization of, uh, of the, the data and bio biometric authentication, offer additional peace of mind. And Apple Pay users uh, also trust Apple's commitment to uh, data privacy, which contributes to the platform's high adoption. And Apple Pay is used for transactions that include in-store purchases, peer-to-peer -peer fund transfers, in-app purchases, and online shopping, for which Apple Pay ranks in the top five payment methods at checkout. So that's important. So let me talk to you about the individual uh, user types here. You have Millennial and Generation Z customers. Okay, so uh, you also have high income customers. So Apple Pay is popular with individuals who earn higher than average incomes. You also have tech savvy customers. So people who adopted mobile payments early 
are also more likely to use the Apple Pay. And you have urban urban dwellers, so Apple Pay usage tends to be higher in cities with developed contactless infrastructure as compared to uh, rural areas. So that's for the individual users. And then what about the business user types? Let's quickly talk about that. So uh, basically, uh, retail, more than 85% of U.S. retailers accept Apple Pay. You also have transportation. So public transport, uh, public transit systems around the world allow users to pay their fare using uh, Apple Pay. So that's kind of cool. You also have hospitality. So hotels and restaurants support Apple Pay as a payment option to streamline check-in and payment processes. And you also have entertainment. So movie theaters and concert venues accept uh, Apple Pay for ticket purchases and uh, concessions. So that's kind of cool. So I want to talk to you about the benefits of accepting Apple Pay this year. So basically you have a faster transactions. So that's kind of cool for your business. If you're a business owner, you will love faster transactions. You have automated processes. You have access to a uh, transaction data, improved security, personalized engagement. So that's kind of cool. You also have a uh, high value, uh, higher value transactions, reduced cart abandonment, diversified revenue streams, better fraud defense and competitive advantage. So that's kind of cool. Let me break it down for you. So uh, basically, uh, Apple Pay has actually uh, with businesses. If you have a business that use uh, Apple Pay, you may see uh, benefits such as faster transactions. So Apple Pay's streamlined payment process reduces the checkout times, leading to a shorter customer queues, improved throughput and a leaner operational footprint. This also improves the customer experience, potentially encouraging repeat visits. That's what you want. You also have automated uh, processes. So uh, Apple Pay's digital transactions remove the need for manual interventions and reduce operational costs associated with payment processing. You have also uh, access to a real-time transaction data that really can give you uh, numerous business advantages with insights into uh, customer spending patterns, preferences, and demographics. And access to this data lets uh, your business improve your inventory management, accurately forecast sales, personalize marketing campaigns, enhance product offerings, and uh, make other important data-driven decisions. So that's really good from a scalability point of view. You have improved security also. So Apple Pay's biometric authentication and tokenization safeguard sensitive financial information, building customer trust and confidence in, in the process. That's kind of cool. You have a personalizing engagement. So because uh, Apple Pay integrates with loyalty programs and reward systems, that really can enable personalized offers and promotions. And this creates a deeper connection with uh, customers, potentially uh, leading actually uh, to greater engagement. And you want to have that. You want to have this sort of a greater engagement, okay? And of course, you have a higher value transactions because the convenience and security of Apple Pay can really encourage customers to spend more. And this is, this is good. Of course, you also have... Uh, a process that can minimize cart abandonment, especially on mobile devices, translating to an increase in sales conversion and further fueling revenue growth. So I'm still talking to you about Apple Pay for business, and I want to quickly talk to you about Apple Pay security measures, which are really, really strong. OK, so you have a uh, when it comes to Apple Pay security, you have uh, a protocol that includes the following security measures to protect sensitive financial information. So you have a secure enclave, secure enclave. You have a secure element, touch ID and face ID. You have encryption. You have dynamic uh, tokens. So that's kind of cool. You have a secure payment gateways, real-time monitoring, or you have a risk scoring. You have granular access control, transaction auditing, and also uh, dedicated security teams. So when, when I speak about dedicated security teams, Apple invests substantial resources into security research and development for Apple Pay to ensure the platform remains resilient against emerging threats. It also conducts a regular independent security audits of its systems and infrastructure so it can promptly address vulnerabilities, okay? Because there are still vulnerabilities anyway. And also with uh, Apple uh, Pay for Biz, you are able to access detailed transaction logs within the Apple Business Manager, and this provides visibility into 
all Apple Pay transactions and enables actually uh, effective monitoring and reconciliation. And you got to have that. And when I speak about granular access control, as a business, you have full control over Apple Pay access within uh, your organization. And you can define which employees can access and have uh, and as actually also use Apple Pay. You can set spending limits and implement mandatory authentication requirements. You also have a real-time monitoring. So Apple's sophisticated fraud detection systems monitor transactions for anomalies and suspicious activity, analyzing transaction patterns, geolocation data, and other relevant factors to identify actually and prevent fraudulent use. And uh, you have secure payment gateways. So Apple, uh, Apple uh, partners with trusted and PCI compliant payment gateways that adhere to a strong security protocols. You have uh, the touch ID and face ID. So the biometric part of things, that's really fantastic. So when you think about Apple Pay for a business, I want you uh, to talk a little bit about accepting Apple Pay as a payment method. So depending on your business as a payment gateway, Accepting the Apple Pay uh, might require little or no setup, but nothing really complicated here, okay? But one thing for sure, if you're a business owner, you must still make sure that your business meets certain requirements to get started with uh, Apple Pay. And uh, so the thing is that uh, basic requirements include possessing all necessary business registrations and licenses in your operating region and adhering to uh, all relevant laws and regulations. This includes uh, following all applicable tax regulations and collecting and remitting taxes as mandated, as well as implementing AML and uh, KYC procedures to verify customer identities and prevent illicit activities. Okay, AML, anti-money laundering, and KYC, know your customer. So as a business, you can you must also comply with the relevant data privacy regulations, such as uh, the EU's GDPR and the California Consumer Protection uh, Act, okay, the CCPA, along with uh, the payment card industry data security standards, the PC, uh, PCI DSS, for secure payment card handling. In addition to ensuring this legal and regulatory sort of uh, platform, sort of compliance, as a business, you must have the following basic technical capabilities because this will really help you actually accept cards faster, accept payments faster. So, in terms of supported devices, Apple Pay works with works on iOS devices with NFC capabilities, including iPhones, iPads, and Apple Watches. And you also have internet connection. So your business must have a stable internet connection to process transactions through Apple Pay. So this is kind of cool. Now, as a business, you must work with the payment gateway to accept Apple Pay payments. So each gateway has its own setup needs. So Stripe, for instance, requires a little setup because its hardware and software are equipped to accept uh, Apple Pay. So before setting up any payment method, your business should carefully review uh, the terms and conditions in uh, your merchant agreements, all associated costs and fees, and also uh, access to a uh, customer support from service providers in case of any technical issues or inquiries. And those will happen, believe me, those will happen. So uh, if you want to actually set up uh, Apple Pay through Stripe, you must actually uh, go through a pretty straightforward process, okay? But the process is kind of similar to uh, if you were to go with uh, Square, if you want to set up Square, or if you want to get up, uh, if you want to set up also uh, Apple Pay through uh, through PayPal, pretty straightforward. And uh, you don't have to hire a developer team to handle it for you. It happens seamlessly. So let me talk to you about the alternatives here. So when you think about Apple Pay for a business, you got to really understand that Apple Pay is not the uh, the only player in, uh, in in this very crowded market. I mean, despite Apple Pay's dominance in the market, businesses and customers have numerous uh, payment method uh, alternatives, okay? And so you have Google Pay, you have Samsung Pay, you have additional digital wallets, okay? You have contactless payment cards, you have QR code payments. That That's, that's really important to think about it. So when I speak about Google Pay, Google Pay has a vast reach and is compatible with most Android and iOS devices with NFC capabilities, which can be a major advantage for businesses that cater to a diverse customer base. And so for if you have a business already widely using Google, Google Pay integrates with Google Play Store, Google Ads, and other services. 
streamlining the payment process for you. So from a customer perspective, Google Pay has a user experience comparable with that of, a, of a Apple Pay. Google Pay is steadily gaining a market share, particularly in Android dominant regions. What about the Samsung Pay? Well, Samsung Pay has an, an unmatched security system using its proprietary magne magnetic secure transmission technology alongside NFC. It's actually compatible with almost uh, any payment terminal, even older models, and its enhanced security can be valuable for businesses that deal with sensitive transactions. So Samsung Pay also integrates with uh, Samsung's loyalty program, Samsung Rewards, which lets uh, businesses such as yours and mine offer incentives to uh, customers through uh, points and rewards. And Samsung commands a large market share in the smartphone industry, particularly in Asia, which translates to a, a ready customer base for businesses that accept Samsung Pay. And uh, so this is, however, Samsung's reach is confined to uh, Samsung devices. And you also have additional digital wallets. So many banks and payment providers have digital wallets. Often these come with a tight integration into uh, the existing banking platforms and financial services, which can create a convenient and familiar experience for customers who already use those devices. And uh, some of uh, those uh, digital wallets also have rewards programs and promotions offering businesses an, an additional method to attract and retain customers. And uh, digital wallets that are tailored to uh, specific markets and regions and cater to uh, local preferences can be uh, beneficial for businesses that operate in those areas, though some local digital wallets may not be as uh, interoperable as the more widely adopted solutions such as Apple Pay and Google Pay. So be aware of that. So you also have a contactless payment card. So that's another possibility. QR code. And outside the U.S., though, there are several uh, region, original alternatives to uh, Apple Pay. So in uh, Asia Pacific, you have Alipay, WeChat Pay, Ovo, and you have uh, Pay Paytim. In Europe, you have Google Pay, Samsung Pay, Swish, and you have uh, MB Way. In Latin America, you have Mer Mercado Pago. You have uh, New Bank, T Paga, and Clip. And in Africa, you have uh, M Pesa, Echo Cash. Orange money and waves. So you have a lot of possibilities there. So in the closing arguments in today's conversation, I walked you through a, a, a guide for Apple Pay for Business. I gave you the full guide, the details, and now the closing arguments. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.